We've all been through pain. We've all suffered some kind of trauma in our lives, big or small, we've all been there. Whether you're an assassin for the Russian mafia or a mercenary for hire, maybe, just maybe, you might benefit from murder therapy. What's up guys, welcome to the channel, Andre here. Today I have a little bit of a confession to make. Uh, I think we've developed a, a safe place between the two of us here, between you, the audience, and, and me, the guy who thinks he should be on the internet. Uh, and I think, it's time, I think it's time for me to share a little bit more of me with you. Well, here it goes. Uh, my name is Andre and I love action movies. No. No! It's true. Uh, I just can't get enough of it. I think, I think it started in my childhood, watching shows like The A-Team, Airwolf, Knight Rider, all shows about guys with plans, getting stuff done at any cost. That leads us to today's discussion about a specific subgenre of the action movie, a genre I like to call murder therapy. Murder therapy, murder therapy. You know the ones. They've become increasingly popular over the last few years and generally follow an emotionally traumatized person, uh, usually a man, who has to literally kill their way through a horde of nameless, faceless bad guys in order to overcome the pain that they experience from the loss of a spouse, child, friend, puppy dog, whatever it is. Throughout the story, they go about indiscriminately murdering dozens of people until they're finally able to get to a place of peace and solace. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at two recent entries into the murder therapy genre. The first is the man, the myth, the legend, the Baba Yaga himself, John Wick. The second is Netflix's recent entry into the genre, the Chris Hemsworth action adventure, Extraction. These abnormalities are corrupting the minds and the hearts of our children. So the first thing to look at in these movies is the way that they construct the world to make it okay for us to root for somebody who's just going around killing everybody in their path. This isn't necessarily an approach that we would ever support in real life, but in order to make the movie work, we have to construct a context that makes us support this kind of extreme martial action. Achieving this effect early in the movie is incredibly important because it sets up the formula for the rest of the film. Baddies gotta die. I mean, that's just what it is. The whole movie is structured around the idea that this one guy is gonna go on a complete and total killing spree. We have to establish early on that that's morally acceptable and justified. Whether it's Charles Bronson taking on street gangs or the Avengers fighting Ultron, regardless of what the scale and context of the movie is, we have to make sure that it's okay for the audience to buy into supporting these characters. Every decision we make, every action we take, affects the lives of others around us. In order to achieve that, the audience needs to see that conventional rules of the world don't apply to our heroes. Take, for example, John Wick deciding to drive his car onto an airstrip and just race around. Like, I can't do that in my Subaru. In the same way, Tyler Rake can stand on the edge of a cliff, jump like a thousand feet into a river, and sit there and meditate, and yeah, he's fine. He doesn't die from the impact against the water like any normal human being would. And this sets up the idea of indestructibility that will play out later on throughout the movie. John Wick being able to drive on an airstrip implies very subtly to the audience that he has access to things that we don't. And that's sort of a subtle cue that we're going to be entering a world that maybe we're not familiar with, but that he has a mastery of. I mean, also, those two things are just super badass and really cool. Uh, who doesn't wish that they could do either one of those things? I meditate every day and I've never done it at the bottom of a river. But it's not just about learning that the characters are able to do something. Lots of people are able to do lots of things, but we need to understand why it's morally acceptable, why they're in, in the right to be going on this murder spree. Why as the audience are we able to root for someone doing something that if we saw it on the news would horrify us? And the reason is they get connected to some kind of trauma. For John Wick, it was the death of his wife and then the death of his puppy. I mean, I've got two dogs. I'd like to think I could go John Wick if someone did anything to them. For Tyler Rake in Extraction, it's about overcoming the, the guilt that he feels 
from sort of abandoning his son before he died of terminal cancer. In both cases, the action of the story is tightly aligned to the pain and trauma that they suffered. John Wick is going to kill the person who killed his dog. Pretty straight A to B connection there. And Tyler Rake is trying to save a child the way that he felt powerless to save his child before he died. Now, once we've established the world, our characters are confronted with what literary professor Joseph Campbell would refer to as the call to adventure. For John Wick, it's when Theon Greyjoy breaks into his house, kills his dog, and steals his car. And for Tyler Rake, it's when that mercenary lady shows up in her helicopter at his weird Unabomber shack and hires him to go save Ovi. Again, it's important that when the adventure is presented to the character, we need to be able to feel very, very early on in the film that this character is capable of taking up that adventure and succeeding in it. By doing so, they'll have achieved some kind of emotional arc. They'll be different at the end than they were from the beginning. Connecting the pain that the hero feels at the outset makes it morally justified for them to be able to go through and engage in this massive killing spree. We understand that they are trying to overcome a trauma and this is the way that they're able to do it. It's not something that you would ever accept as reality. You would never say, oh, it's okay that that guy shot up an entire, you know, city full of police officers. He's just working through some stuff. That would never be acceptable in a million years. The link between their pain and the action of the story is also what limits the scope of their murder. I mean, don't worry about it. John Wick's only killing the people who are involved in killing his dog. If they weren't bad guys, they wouldn't be at that Russian mafia controlled nightclub or that restaurant or that hotel or that Moroccan bazaar or that lavish Roman gala. No, they are there because they are at least in some way connected to the thing that John Wick is trying to destroy and therefore it's morally acceptable, nay, righteous for John to kill them. So this brings us to a pretty big question. If we accept that the underlying validation for these plot structures is the idea of reconciling emotional trauma, why is mass murder and violence seen as an acceptable way for mostly men to address their emotions and pain. I will grant you that a two hour movie of John Wick going to therapy and volunteering at a hospice will not provide the same kind of heart pounding action sequences that we get out of the John Wick movies. I mean, have you seen John Wick 3? He kills a guy in a library with a book. That's an amazing action sequence. The choreography, everything that goes around in the physical space is amazing. But when we look very closely at movies like John Wick and Extraction, we find that we have two very divergent paths towards reconciling the emotional issues here. For John Wick, it's a very clear and direct line. Theon Greyjoy killed the puppy that John Wick's dead wife left him. John Wick must kill Theon Greyjoy. That's all there is to it. Is it overkill? Yeah, obviously he goes a little over the top by killing like the dozens of people standing in his way. Yeah, that's, that's a little much, even for me. But He's the Baba Yaga. That's just what he does. And we establish that very early on in the movie, not only by seeing his abilities to do things that we can't do, but also by seeing the reactions of all of the characters when they hear the name John Wick. It sets a precedence for the grandiosity of the violence that he's going to engage in. This is kind of where extraction loses me because it doesn't matter if he kills a thousand Bangladeshi drug runners or if he saves a thousand different little boys at the end of the day, he's not actually doing the work of confronting his emotional trauma because none of those things was related to what happened. His trauma is that he actually did something cowardly, but it doesn't matter how many people he kills because nothing will absolve him of that guilt unless he directly confronts it, which he's not doing through the action of this movie. So then we have to talk about victory criteria. What does an ending actually look like for these characters? They go through what Joseph Campbell would call the road of trials, which involves killing like dozens of people. And then eventually they have to overcome some final challenge, some final big boss. They've healed their trauma through the only constant that has been in their lives, killing. They have no further need for violence because they've completed their journey. The quest is complete. The story is over. Uh, unless it was really popular, then there's gonna be a sequel. But look, it, none of this really matters because this isn't real life and it's not supposed to be real life. It's not a documentary. These are over the top, hyper stylized movies where violence has absolutely no consequence except the catharsis that it brings the audience by getting to live vicariously through the characters. That's the only thing these movies are intended to do and adding a different layer of subtext onto it, while interesting maybe for a YouTube video from sort of an academic perspective, doesn't actually speak to the intent of the genre, which is to provide a fun, consequence-free 
a fantastical departure from reality. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Just, just a little stroke. Not, not a punch, not a slam, not a smash. We're just, it's just a like, it's not a love. You might smash the love button, but you're just gonna tap the like button, just a little bit. But if you think you enjoyed this video enough that you wanna watch others like it, passionately hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you feel like getting notified because you just can't wait to find these videos on your own, hit the little bell. It'll send you a notification on your phone every time a new video comes up. And then you can be like, oh my God, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and watch a YouTube video. Cause let's face it, that's where a lot of people watch YouTube videos. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's true. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. And as usual, you will see me in the next video.